you tormented souls. <laughs>
answered. Gather the bodies of 100 dead dragonborn and lay them on top of my mountain. Then burn them, and I will make flying monsters to rule the upper rim. You will call them dragons. I hear you, my god. But how will this help us? Won't they kill us all? I will hold back their primal instinct, so they will not kill anyone, except if they themselves are attacked. And I will make it so that if all dragonborn are killed, then when the last one dies, I will no longer hold back their primal instinct. And I will release the biggest dragon of them all, Nova King. And they will kill everyone, and burn all Ariana to ashes. This apocalypse you will call... Vernaruk. No one will dare make the dragonborn extinct. Vernaruk. That's right, boy. The god Ignitus created his own day of apocalypse. If all dragonborn are slain. Vernaruk will occur. So this was our stop at Camp Lore. Now we're going to continue our journey. The flashback is over and now we're going to play our first live game. Our last session was a flashback where Hadarai was telling King Vash what happened in Ronin. And now we're going to continue from Ronan, as my brother is playing the character Sovan. Sovan is finding himself wondering who I am, where do these powers come from, what is going on, and he feels like he needs to know more about himself and has taken that decision to depart from Victor and Hadarai. And he's going on a trip for himself, and that's this session episode. But before we start, we just want to tell you that Chastan Johansen, who plays Sovan, is also seen at our other channel on YouTube called The Nerd Hangout, where we talk about all kinds of nerdish stuff. Now to continue with the story of Sovan. We start back in Ronin. In his bed, in Ronin, Sovan is lying there thinking to himself, Who am I? There is more to me than meets the eye. There is so much of me that I do not know. We have just fought off Mike Silversling here in Ronin and I am in this big mansion, owned by Mike Silversling and his family who is no longer with us. I am here with my friends Victor and Hadarai, but I feel like I have to depart from them now and go on my own quest to find myself. Here is where you will continue playing Sovan, your character. And as he is lying there, a thought came to his mind about a mystic shop in Little Canyon owned by Iris. She gave him a lot of information about himself, but she didn't reveal everything. She was very mystical. And someone thinks to himself that that must be a good place to start. Maybe she knows more than she has let on. So now I want to ask you, how will you proceed? Okay, so I am in Little Canyon. Ronin. And I, now I am in Ronin, and I have to get to Little Canyon. Yes, you are in Ronin, sleeping in your bed, waking up, when, when um, you think these things. How far is it from here to Ronin, to Little Canyon? Do I remember that? Yeah, you recall that it's about four days' trip. Four days' travel, all right. So I've got a bit of money in my pocket, I guess. Yeah, about yeah. 600 gold. Um so I'll just where, where am I exactly? In, you're in you're lying in your bed in the mansion. The day after fighting with Mike Silversling. 
I meant the Silver Sling Mansion. Okay. The Silver Sling Mansion, yeah. And you wake up that morning before yeah. everyone else. Okay. So, there, I guess there are servants and uh, things like that in the mansion. There are a lot of servants or in the Silver Sling Mansion, but they're all sleeping. Yeah, okay. It's about 5 o'clock in the morning, so it's you can hear the hen clucking, and they're so quiet okay. outside that not even the animals are waking up yet. Cockroaches. Yeah, exactly. Only, only the cock is awake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So, I'll just grab my things. And just try and head out as smoothly as possible and as lightly as possible. Okay, can you roll a stealth check out for of me? The mansion, of course. Yeah, roll a stealth check for me. So we can see uh, if anyone hears you uh, yes. leaving. That is a 15. A 15, okay. It seems to go very smooth, doesn't seem like anyone noticed you leaving. And then you make it outside. And again, you notice that the animals are asleep. It's barely light out, and it's very cold and a little damp. You can see your breath in the air, how cold it is, and it's very quiet. And in front of you, you see three horses belonging to you guys. I mean, Sovan, Hadurai, and... Um, Victors. And Victors, right. Who are yeah. still sleeping inside the Silver Sling Mansion. Yeah, well, I will, of course, head to my own horse. And I'll saddle up and just ride into the morning sun. So off you are on your trip to Little Canyon. Yeah. And as you know, the trip is a four-day journey, so you'll have to rest sometimes. Yeah, of course. So do you have a plan on how you want to proceed this journey? I mean, um, I don't feel like I'm in a hurry, though. Uh, so I'll uh, I'll manage my my rations and my sleep uh, accordingly. So I don't overuse or save. You know, it's just uh, it just feels like a, natu- a a a normal trip. So you take it easy. You don't uh, hurry too much, but you save rations and move on carefully. No, I don't feel like they know where I'm going or. Or even if they caught up with me, I I wouldn't be afraid of that or anything. So. No, and, well, there's nobody after you, per se. I mean, like, you finished your job in uh, Ronin and uh, your friends are asleep, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No one's chasing you right now. Well, anyway, you take your trip and you come to Little Canyon and there has been no trouble right. at all. The shop where uh, where that woman was, do I remember the name? Iris's Health. Iris Health. Yeah. Well, I'm going to head towards her. Well, excellent. Um, well, it's a familiar place. You've been there before. When you arrive, you notice, as you did the last time, that there are four guard towers, but it doesn't seem like anyone is on them. Uh, you arrive about midday, so you see that uh, some f- uh, farmers are working the fields and some are actually leaving their stations to have their break or have some lunch. Um, it's hot and sunny out and there's a lot of sand everywhere in this area. Okay. So you arrive and of course you remember where the Mystic Shop yeah. is, Iris's Health. It's in the west end uh, in the village. Um, but is there anything you want to do before you proceed to the music shop? Okay. Yeah, well, I don't feel like I have any obligation to talk to anyone. or I don't have anything, any other matters to attend to. So I'll just head straight for the, for the uh, shop. Okay. Um, as you come close to the mystic shop, can you roll a perception check for me? I will. That's a 11. An 11, okay. You notice when you come close to the shop that the door is open. Okay. 
and as you get closer you can see that the door knob is actually broken open damn it I will very gently go around the house and check if there are any windows I can look into without being noticed by anyone who could be on the inside okay as you do that can you make a stealth check for me yeah oh that's five so you rolled a five okay well you move around the house and as you as you walk stealthily or trying to be you accidentally kick a bucket and it makes a lot of noise but luckily enough it doesn't seem like anyone has come running towards the noise okay so do you go inside the shop or what do you do mm. okay well I'll I go to the counter of the shop so you go inside and go to the counter of the shop yeah as you're proceeding inside, I'm guessing you're still doing stealthily. Yeah, of course. Or being careful. Um, when you open the door and are inside, you see that it's torn apart. It's broken down, everything's been thrown on the floor, and uh, it just looks like a mess. So how do you proceed when you go inside? Of course, I keep my wits about me. Um, <laughs> trying to... Uh control any immediate danger should there be any so you're being alert I go towards the counter to see if there's uh, any bodies or any uh, you know slain people around there okay so you take a good look but what is your passive perception it's 11 okay when a passive perception of 11 you will of course notice if there's a body lying on the ground yeah. and there isn't any Ah, okay. And the shop is not Great. that large, so you can see almost all the corners. It's only two room house. It's the outside of the room where the yeah. shop is, and then the inside where her apartment okay. is, or the back. Um, I will try. And are there any uh, yeah yeah cabins or classes that have been forced open? Yeah, it seems like they're all been open and emptied. Like someone was looking for something in this apartment. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the lady's gone, completely gone. There's no sign of Iris anywhere okay. in this apartment. But roll an investigations check for me to see if you're missing any details. That's investigation. 12. 12 on investigation. Okay. Well, you notice this when you look around, that there's a lot of valuables lying around, which seems very odd. It doesn't seem like they came in to get rich. Oh. Mm. So they were looking for something specific. Would seem so, yeah. I can imagine, of course. Okay. <clears throat> um, another thing you notice with uh, your perception of or investigation of 12 is that you find a key lying on the floor. A key? Ooh. Okay. So I'll spend another minute trying to look around if I can fi find a matching keyhole. Okay, can you roll an in another investigations check for me? Yeah, of course. Ah, six. Six, okay. Well, you look around and it doesn't seem like you can fit a key in anywhere. And of, of course you take your obvious choices by doors and lockers and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it doesn't seem like to fit well, anywhere in this okay. place. Are there any carpets? There's a carpet lying in the middle of the floor, yeah, where there's wood and some things thrown on the floor lying on it. Okay, I'll try and remove the carpet just to see if there's a, a hidden uh, door yeah. underneath. Yeah, yeah. so you, you move the things around to get to the carpet and flip it open and it doesn't have anything okay. underneath, just the floor. Mm. Okay, well, I don't think I can find anything else here by myself, so... I'll head out the front door and try to go to a tavern or a, an inn or anything like that. Yeah, okay. The inn in Little Canyon is called the Little Inn, which you saw when you came to Little Canyon and you've seen it okay. before. I'll go to the Little Inn. Okay. As you approach the Little Inn, you see that people are standing outside and there's a lot of people inside who are now... Uh, feasting on their oh. lunch break from working all day. Um, some of them people are ju not just eating but are also drinking. Um, 
but it seems like there's a lot of people inside. You notice that there's a stage inside the inn, but it's it's empty. Okay. I'll go to the to to the bar itself and ask for a, uh, is there an innkeeper? Yeah, there's an innkeeper standing behind the bar with his back turned to you, cleaning his glass in his hand. Um, okay, I'll go to the innkeeper and ask him if there's been any suspicious activity at uh, at the mystic shop. Do you mean the Irish shop? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What has happened? Has there been, or there has been, a break-in? Oh, uh, no. Poor Iris. Really? You didn't, you didn't know? No, I didn't know at all. Oh, my. So, no one's been talking about it. I haven't heard a word. No one's been saying anything around here. I don't think anyone noticed. It just happened just now. Must have. Okay. Because I, I went there right now. Yeah? And... The, the door was forced open and everything is Why, this generally is in ruin inside. This is like horrible. Like someone was searching for for something. And she was not there at all. Poor Iris. But, you know what? Give me a second, I'll fetch my son. Maybe he can come down with you to yeah, help sure. you. Richie, come down here. And then you see a, a young strapping lad coming down the stairs to greet you. What's wrong, father? What, what, what's going on? It's Iris's shop. Somebody's been broken into it this night. Please, will you follow this man and help him? Of course I will, father. Hello, my name is Richie. Hi. Nice to meet you. Tell me, somebody broke into Iris's shop? Is that what happened? Yeah, yeah, Iris. Well, I suggest that we move on, shall we? Let's go. Uh, so uh, the son follows you down to uh, Iris's shop. And as you are leaving, the father comes and say, "Yeah, okay." And tells you that I'm going to fetch a guard. We need help. Go on. Okay. We will catch up down at the yeah, house. Thank you. So now uh, you and this son called Richie are running down to uh, the house, and uh, he asks you yeah. as you are running, uh, "Tell me, have you been inside the house?" Yeah, I took a quick look around. There was... There was uh, a lot of things that were not stolen. So I'm guessing they were looking for something particular. Okay. And I'm guessing they found it. Or maybe they didn't and they took Iris to interrogate her. Or no. some, some, something. Yeah, I hope not. I'm not quite sure. I just arrived. Okay, I understand. About half an hour ago. Okay. Well... Let's hope we find something. Let's go. And as you uh, approach Iris's house, um, Richie just goes straight inside, running right. straight inside. Um, and do you follow him inside uh, as he's mm -hmm. looking around? Do you tell him anything? No, not really. I, I don't think. Yeah, or, uh, of course, I tell him I've been looking around and I, and I didn't find anything myself. And I don't think that you'll find anything. So maybe we should just wait for your father. Okay. Uh, and he uh, comes with you and steps outside. When you've been waiting for about ten minutes, uh, the father comes uh, with a guard. And the look of the guard is actually very shabby. He doesn't look like okay. he's taken his mm. profession very um, proudly. He looks sloppy, he looks dirty, okay. and he basically smells a bit drunk. And then he says, What's going on? Break in. Break in. Everybody step back. I'll take care of this. And he un takes his sword out and goes waddling inside. Uh, there's no one in there. I I've already You sure? Well, thank the gods. I'm terrified. Well, tell me who are you? Well, you're the one who made this discovery. Yeah, I got her about uh, half an hour ago. Okay. And I noticed I, I was going to to the store to talk to Iris. And I noticed the front door was broken into. Very observant, I are you? went in to check if I found anything or anyone. Okay. But it's been cleaned up pretty nicely. That's what it sounds like. You got, it's covered. So you haven't seen anyone else. You were the first one here, were you? Yeah, I was the first one to arrive. I think. I'm, I'm not sure. 
Oh, I only know that I have seen it, and the innkeeper didn't know anything about it. Okay. So nobody knows about it, it's not even me, and I'm the only guard around. And people always talk about shit. Well, that's weird. It's really weird. But did you find anything? I found absolutely nothing. Oh, shite. You can go and check for yourself. I trust you. Wait a minute. <laughs> where are you? Okay, I guess where you're here. <laughs> Where your head is. It wasn't me. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> we'll make this a lot easier. I uh, can't manage this. Uh, and then he goes himself in for a closer look. Uh, and he looks around and comes back out, shaking his head, just holding his head. Oh, I can't find anything. No, no, no tracks? I anything? Could, no. I'm not good at tracking people. But. Well, I uh, didn't find shite. Best might be just to ask around, maybe some of the neighbors or something. I think that would be a good idea. I need a drink. Yeah, of course. Should we uh, split up? Yeah, we split up. We can cover more ground since I'm the only one working here. I'm just finding this to be very odd. It didn't take any of the valuables. What kind of thief does that? Yeah, they're, they're taking something very specific. It's no coincidence they broke in there. Yeah, that sounds about right. But I'm very worried about yeah. poor Iris. Yeah, I guess that they didn't find what they were looking for, and they have taken her for some kind of interrogation. Interrogation. Bloody or... bastards! <laughs> but let's go take a look around. Ask the neighbors. Yeah, right. I'll take this house. Excellent. And you know, I'll take this house. one, I guess, since you're the one in charge. So Sovan, still passionate about finding himself, has volunteered to help and solve this mystery of Iris. And they start looking around house to house, asking questions. Did anyone see anything about what happened that night at Iris' house? And you have to walk a, a, a little distance before you come to the house which you are going to inspect or ask around in. Uh, you see it's a small farmer house with cows okay. and chickens around. And uh, people are getting back to the fields from working after the lunch breaks. Uh, and some of the fields are around this house. And you see an older man as you um, uh, come close to the house. He's standing on his porch and he catches his eye. And he says, Hello, son. How can I help you? I'm sorry to trouble you, sir. But no trouble at all. There's been a break-in at Iris's shop. Oh, Is yeah? Is there anything you would know about the matter? What's happened? I don't know. I, I just arrived uh, about half an hour ago. All right. And I, I maybe thought you might know what's going on as she's... Right beside you. She so is, yeah. Her shop is right beside your house. But I didn't know it was broken into. I haven't noticed that at all. I'm old, you know. A bit blind as well. Poor Irish. But I wa one thing I did see were two lads at her house at night. The only reason I noticed mm. is I was outside feeding the pigs. Okay. Can you describe these uh, persons in any way? Their height, uh, structure, anything? Uh, with my poor eyes. It was dark outside, I'm sorry to say, and my blindness doesn't help. I'm not completely blind, so I saw them a bit. But they looked like there were two who looked alike. Like they were similar. Twins, maybe? Brothers? Oh. Okay. Identical. I you didn't know. hear any bashing against the door or kicking it, kicking it in or using magic or anything? No. I'm also a bit deaf, so I didn't hear any booming and bashing. And it okay. looked like they were having friendly talking. But they went inside and then they left. Yeah, they left. Can you tell me anything? What hair color they had? What color the clothes were? Well, this one thing I did see. They were bald, both of them, no hair. Okay. 
and they had ugly green clothes on. Their jackets. Racket, ugly green. Okay, so the clothes were green in color. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> and bold. Even I have hair in yeah, my age. They're bold and the clothes were green in color. That's everything you have. As all I have, I'm sorry I'm a bit deaf and blind <laughs> and I don't go no, peeking it's, around it's fine, other fine, people's business, nothing. but this just caught they me They had eye. matching outfits then? They had matching outfits, I noticed that, yeah. Okay. And like I said, they were bald, ugly, and I yes. have hair. They were both bald and they both had green jackets. That's right. That's what I saw. I thank you kindly, sir. You're most then welcome, I hand him, uh, young a silver man. coin. Silver? Yeah, well, there's more where that came from. So just, then I shake my pouch. Oh. So I'll just head back to the shop. I will keep my eyes and open see if, then. Uh, Grandmaster soldier guy has found anything. Okay, and as you approach Ciri's help shop, he's standing there waiting for you, waving you to come. Fellows, we found out something. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, they were green men or very green clothes, they said. And there were two of them, bald by the looks of them. And uh, the one you talked to today, hear any noises that could indicate forced entry? No, no, they didn't hear anything at the beginning. What they say an hour or two later, then they heard some noise out there. Well, they didn't take another look or call for help or anything. They just ignored it. Yeah, well, thank you. But one thing they did notice or mention that they were twins. Yeah, I got that much too. There's one thing I don't know. There's not any twins around here. No. It could be magic, also. There is a possibility, of course. So, <coughs> oh, I mean, excuse me. I'm sure they could be twins, but it sounds like more. It sounds more like a disguise to me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What do we do now? Do you have any idea how we should proceed from here? No, not really. I need a drink. Uh, maybe I'll just take another look around inside. Mm -hmm. Is there anything I can do? Yeah. You know what? Go back to the inn. Maybe somebody heard something now. Rumors move around very fast. That should be a good idea. It's gone a couple of hours now since lunch. And people here don't have anything to do about just gossiping. So there's a very mm -hmm. nice chance that somebody knows yeah. something. But that's for me, I think I'm going back inside the house and they have a closer look. There uh, must be something that uh, we missed. I didn't catch your name. Ricky or Rich, Richard. Richard. Thank you. I'm Sovan. Hello, Sovan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Richard. Damn, I'm getting sober now. I'm hearing it where I talk. Want a drink? Oh, I'm more interested in uh, finding Iris than anything else right now. Yeah, uh, well, fine, so am I. Well, I'll head towards the tavern. Well, see you later then. Okay, so uh, when you come close to the little inn, it's later during the day, uh, so... People are now drinking a little bit more and there's music yeah. playing. A lot of the people are actually finishing their day's work and now just want to have a nightcap or drink some All alcohol right. before they go well, home. Well, I'll enter and I will specifically look for green jackets and bald men. Make a perception check. That's an 18. Okay. You can clearly see around the crowd that you, there is no bold man around. I will go up to the barkeep and ask if she's heard anything else about the matter or anything at all. Okay, this time when you come to the to the bar, uh, there is a young lady attending mm. the bar now. I'll start from the top. Where uh, or have you heard anything about a break-in at Iris's magic shop? Oh, no, I've just heard 
the owner here talking about the breaking. I haven't heard anything myself, but one thing I find to be very peculiar is there was this one man asking about oh, Irish have, shop yesterday. Did he have a green jacket and a bald hair? Yes, he had did. He did. He was bald and had a green jacket. Ooh. Was there a duplicate? A duplicate what? I'm sorry? Were there two men or only one? No, there was only the one. Okay. Mm-hmm. He had a friend outside. Mm. Okay. Can you tell me... I never saw the other one. Mm. Okay. Can you tell me what kind of questions he asked? Well, he did ask for Iris, specifically, by name. And asked what she did, or where her shop okay. was, and what she sold. Or what she's famous for, or does, or sells. What she does, or sells? Yeah. Hmm, okay. They didn't ask about any products, or... Anything inside the shop? Yeah, well, they asked about her health potions. Iris, you know, is famous for her health potions. She's one of the best in the land to make them. So they say, well, that's the best in Little Canyon. She's famous at the bottom, so naturally I thought that was what they were searching for, and I was right. Did he? Yes. It seemed very interesting. Okay. That's it. Was there anything else? Mm, no, don't think so. Wait, 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 yes, they mentioned something about going back to Canyon, our neighbor city, or village. It's, it's not that far off. Okay, thank you. You've been a very good help. No, well, thank you. I'm glad to help. I hope you find Iris. See you later. I place a silver coin on the counter. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you indeed too. Uh, so I'll I'll head outside again. Okay. Um, so you leave uh, the inn, and you notice, of course, that people are enjoying themselves. They're having fun, um, and uh, some of them are actually going home. And not all of them want to feast the entire night. So you go outside, and what do you do? Yeah. Okay. I will go and search for Richard again. Okay. Richard is still at the house. So you're going back there. Yeah, I'm going back to the house, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, as you come close to the house, you see that Richard's actually uh, going outside the house and he's trying to close the door and he's trying to get it locked. But it seems like he, he can't get a key to fit. Okay. Um, I will hand him the key I found. Okay, he takes your tell key. Him, oh, I actually forgot about this and had it to him. Thank you. Uh, he, he tries to jam it inside. This key doesn't work either. Wait a minute. Right. What's this? Where did you find this key? It looks odd. I found it inside when I was uh, sc- uh, scourging around. Uh, and I totally forgot I had it in my pocket. Really? Until I saw you now trying to lock the door. Okay, he takes the key and takes a, l- a closer look at it, turning it around. It. There's a symbol on here. Or a description. Is this Brothers O'Neill? There's no brother so Neil here. Why is this in Iris's house? And then he takes a while thinking hard. And then he looks at you and says, Why is this so familiar, this name? Where do I remember this? So I talked to the barkeep at the tavern and she told me that she over she had talked to, to one of the brothers before this incident. Okay. Um, she overheard that after they had done what they were supposed to do, they would head back to Canyon. Canyon? Canyon, that's right. There's where I remember this symbol. It's the blacksmithing shop in Canyon. The Brother O'Neill. They are the one running it. This is their, this is their symbol. Uh, well. And they're actually famous for being twins. Why haven't I thought of this before? Sounds kind of... <sighs> Matching. Yeah. Yeah. It must be them. Great job, detective. Oh, uh, you as well. Thank you. But now, no, what are we going to do now? I can't leave. I'm stationed here. I'm the only guard in this forsaken little canyon town. 
I have to be here. What about you? Yeah, of course. Can you take a look? But, uh... But what? I must be out. A man doesn't do everything for free, right? Free! You want gold? But I thought you wanted to help poor Iris. Weren't you looking for her? Yeah, I was. What's the problem then? It's become kind of more complicated and maybe a bit dangerous. Yes, you're right. So I'm not the... But you were looking for her in the first place, weren't you, Sovan? And you will be very thankful if you find her. And I will be thankful if you help me. I don't have any money. I am so cheap and alone and I drink. I am sober now. What do you want? One silver piece. Oh, silver piece. What about half a silver piece? All right, I'll give you Deal. one silver piece. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> Only half then. Only half. That's fine. That's brilliant. You know what? No, I will give you one silver piece. Thank you kindly, sir. This is for Iris. Now I've paid you. You have. I am now under contract. Exactly. Contracts to save Iris. But boy, before you leave, you do, do come back. And I want to thank you. I know I've not been clear in my head. Oh, it's fine. Well, uh, I am very grateful. Yeah, I understand. I understand. And he waves you off and he leaves. What do you want to do now? So I will head for Canyon. So you're going to Canyon and you take your horse? By horse. Yes. <clears throat> the way you arrived. Makes sense? And so runs off to Canyon to find more about himself and find out what happened to Iris. I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. Next time, we're going to follow a different group of people. And we're going to meet Sovan later on again. Hope you enjoyed this episode. This is episode 3. And I will see you guys later. Thanks for stopping by. Oh yeah, before we leave, I just want to give you a little announcement. If you like cool sound effects like this. Then go to our homepage at nordicdnd.podbean.com or our YouTube channel, where you'll find a link that'll take you to battlebars.com and you'll get a discount on subscriptions. Yeah.